let's show you a single interlocking continuous. Here we have our simple continuous, which is an interrupted and then buckle lingual throws and tying it to a final knot. We're going to start the same with a simple interrupted first for our interlocking continuous. So we'll tie our first knot. And then we can cut that tail. And we're going to keep all of our knots on the same side. So we'll start similar to the simple continuous. We're going to do another bite about three to four millimeters adjacent, three to four millimeters deep. But rather than simply cinching this, we're going to leave the loop leave the loop and we're going to twist the loop all the way around once and pass our needle through it to ourselves. Now as we cinch and tighten, careful not to lock ourselves out, especially with silk, when we get close to the knot being down we're going to grab it and give it a little rock across the incision and then a lock to the side you're putting your knot on. Okay. And now you have tension going perpendicular to your incision line. And we'll go ahead and throw our next throw. Similar depth, similar spacing. We're going to leave a loop. loop again. We go ahead and twist all the way around, pass it to ourselves, and as the loop gets close, we tighten it, rock it across the incision, and lock it to the buckle. And we can continue this as long as we need to or can. And when we get to the end, rather than twisting the loop, we will leave the loop and use it as a final tail to tie off. So in effect we have, in this example, four little knots that are a little less likely the incision to open compared to the simple continuous with the two knots.